Hello everyone and welcome back to Simple Rockets 2 where I have added another stage to the rocket I launched in the previous episode. That's right, in the previous episode I had launched a rocket to the moon. The capsule managed to land safely on the moon. Well, yeah, whether you call that safely or not is a good question. But uh, So my goal this time is to land a capsule on the moon and potentially return it safely to uh, whatever our planet's name is. We've got landing legs this time on the upper stage there, so hopefully they will actually be used, but we'll see, we'll see. You can see I've retained the Mad Maxi Rocket of Doom, though. Uh, somebody suggested that it should be the Reavers or any any sort of uh, evil space entity like that. And so uh, I, I recall in Firefly that uh, they did strap bodies to their ships, so... I guess that works. On the big stage down here, I decided not to perpetuate that for now. Uh, for now, let's just see how it does with 108 Pixie engines on the first stage. Uh, that's a lot of engines. And why 108? Well, basically because that's all I could fit down there uh, during a live stream. Basically, I was putting this together while Kerbal Space Program was reloading, and that was it. So, but we didn't actually get to finish seeing whether this would work or not. It is actually still in flight, but I switched back to Kerbal in the middle. So, yeah, uh, so we do have a craft in flight thing here and a resume flight button, that's important. Uh, we also have certain other changes we have here. Uh, it looks like they've been listening to us because they added delta V thrust weight ratio and burn time information to the designer that can be toggled on and off. Well, I thought it was already in the designer, so... Uh, well, anyway, uh, but uh, I, I sort of want it more on the front screen, but let's see. Certainly, Delta V information is important. There's a photo library. Bug fixes. Well, that would be important. Because uh, uh, still, I think there was still not a occlusion of thrust, but we'll see. Fix a bug that would cause dock crafts to spin. You can dock, so if you were wondering about that. Uh, bug where RCS would stop working when the center mass became very close to the nozzles. Well, it it sort of doesn't help when they're very close to the nozzles, but anyway. Uh, cause plants to look jittery. Uh, symmetry could lead to errors in the designer. Uh, sandbox unplayable if it was unable to load a single craft from file. Uh, so, yeah, plenty of bugs here, and there's probably more work to be done. This is still in early access, you can see in the upper right-hand corner there. So, we have been advised. So, let's see. Uh, let's take a look at this in the designer, perhaps. So, uh, they promised uh, information. Okay, well, this is uh, 50... It always says 50 parts. There's no way it's 50 parts. It just stops counting after that or something. I don't know. It, it clearly shows different instances of the Pixie engine. But it, it's not even highlighting the ones down here. I don't know. I don't know how it works with the part count here. So, staging. Staging is important to us. And we wanted to see Delta V. Uh, let's actually close that up. It claims that I have a 1.1 thrust to weight ratio on the first stage. I believe it. I, I basically put as many engines uh, as I could and then sized the tank based on what I thought would barely get off the ground. Uh, so 3,545. You, you don't want to barely get off the ground. If, if you're new to the space thing, you probably want a thrust to weight ratio a little bit more than 1.1. Maybe uh, somewhere between 1.3 and 1.5 would be good. Uh, 1.2 is fine, something like Saturn V which, with its grace, graceful liftoff had a 1.2-ish, but um, you might want some more vigor in order to get past atmospheric drag quicker. Uh, so again, yeah, we barely get past anything. You can see there's a decoupler, and then uh, we have this stage, and that really needs to go down here. That's the decoupler there, and then that stage. Yeah, that's better. That certainly makes that seem... Ah, uh, so, uh, reason why these weren't... Well, that says zero thrust weight ratio now. Oh, uh, this engine should be with these. That's the problem. You, here, right. Five engines there. Okay, the coupler there. Check your staging. <laughs> So, okay, that, that looks fine. So that, that's all we're talking about. 12.6 kilometers per second. 
and you can see 1.1, 1.05, 0.85, 0.66. Okay, and overall 502 tons on the launch pad and 25 million dollars in theory. Um, 108 engines, 25, 5, and 1, all Pixie engines all the way. So, with that being the craft, let's see how it flies. Now, I have mapped my joystick to, to control this, but it's a bit sensitive and I haven't fine-tuned it yet. So I'm going to continue using these axes. I know you can use WASND, but I've never used WASND to control a rocket. So, uh, unlike uh, those uh, KSP keyboard players, I've always had a joystick and I've always used it. So, I'm until I can get the joystick uh, to my liking, I'm just going to use these things because at least they're precise. Uh, the problem with WASND is I always overcorrect, and it's not precise to where I want it to be. This is basically like MechJeb, uh, Smart ASS. So, like at least I have that reference point. And interesting, the timer didn't start at zero, which means it's still uh, counting based on the previous launch, because that mission is still in flight, I think. I think that's how it works. So anyway, ignition. Oh, throttle up. Well, that's a lot of smoke. And you'll note the altitude ticking up. Gotta try and rotate the camera. It's a bit sticky. It's certainly a bit sticky. And I'm gonna let it go straight up for a little while. I mean, this is not full frame rates, I don't think. But it's getting a little bit better as we go up after we get past the smoke. Now that we don't have so much billowing smoke, it's, uh, it's a bit smoother. So again, you have to go back over the launch complex in order to go the right direction. Keep that in mind. There's a bit of camera inertia. In other words, when I drag the camera to a point, it continues drifting a little bit. I'm not too sure I want camera inertia, but it's certainly there. I did go a little bit steeper because I anticipate that the second stage needs some time. It only has a thrust weight ratio of 1. So. But we could probably flatten out before staging, so let's go like that. And stage. And ignition. So this was our rocket last time, right? We got to 1,800 meters per second surface velocity and basically 70 kilometers in altitude. And now we've got the rocket from last time. The Mad Maxi rocket of Doom or the Reaver rocket. Probably we'll have to pitch down in order to constrain our orbit. Our apoapsis is already 140 meters per second. Why don't we just... It seems to be 2.1 minutes. I think we can probably cut throttle for now and drift a little bit. Let's coast up there. I may have waited too long on this. not really accelerating very much. I don't know if there's a way to change your staging here once you're in flight. Oh no! I, I staged. Ah, uh, shucks. That is not what I wanted to do. Okay, clicking that stages. Clicking that stages. Well, there goes that stage. That was a pretty slow stage anyway. We may need some more time now. I guess there wasn't that much left in that stage, right? Ooh, it's very choppy and physical time warp now. I didn't try that before. But yeah, that's...
It's not that much physical time warp and still... It's sticky. Oh, no, it's smoothed out. Oh, it was the other stage, I bet. I bet the other stage got destroyed right there and now it's smooth. So it was only choppy with the other stage in the render range. Good point. Alright, let's go straight now. Alright, well, about 100 by 100, that should do. Okay, so plotting for the moon, or Luna. Hmm, it's got a little gray arrow there. I wonder if that's trying to indicate that that's the right place to do a burn to reach our target. I don't know, and then it has this approach info already. Yeah, I think, I think that's what I was trying to indicate with the gray arrow. It already tells you to write phase angle, or approximately so. So if you see a gray arrow on your orbit after you've targeted the moon, that's actually the right time to burn, I think. And one thing I would like is if uh, we could use the scroll wheel to fine tune these, because just dragging it is very sensitive. Or if we could just type in adjustments in here, that'd be nice. You've got the delta V here. If we could, like, you know, have a plus or a minus, that might be sufficient. Of course, um, it doesn't set the particular vector, but... Okay, well, that seems to be a burn to the moon. Right, so let's have our craft time warp to that point. So let's say... We'll just start out at 1.1 uh, minute ahead of time because we want to do half the delta V ahead of time and half the delta V after. And the we get more delta V on the second half of the burn. Except we probably will be staging in the middle of the burn, so that's a caveat. Oh, and it doesn't do 1.1. Okay, um, what am I looking at? I think we're pointing in the right direction, right? Right? Maybe? Oh, okay, just... Mm, it's not showing thrust right now. Is it paused? Oh, I think it's paused. Ah! I had accidentally paused it for some reason. wonder what key that is to pause it. Um, it looks like that's our maneuver. Uh-oh. Let's see. Well, our orbit is expanding outward. That's good. It's the right direction. Delta V is counting down appropriately. And remember, our upper stage had quite a lot of Delta V. It can get around. But can it get it back home? That's a good question. We're basically going to use up this stage on our trans lunar injection burn here. Um, I don't know. Do we have it? I mean, shouldn't we have an encounter at this point? It's not an indicating one. But if you look at our current trajectory, it's... This is the resulting trajectory after. This is the original. See, uh, see the moon approaching this trajectory? So, like... Isn't this okay? Haven't we got this already? Alright, well, um... Let's dump this burn, and yeah, no, it's it's got a little orbit there. Let's burn a little bit more, maybe, delicately. No? Okay, that's that's going further away. So what we want to do is turn around. Oh no, I didn't want to select the capsule. I want to use your mighty reaction wheel. Okay, this has got to be some sort of ambient light setting, right? Quality. Ambient light at night. <laughs> Just pump it up for me, would you? Ambient light in space. Yeah, sure. Ah, that's not enough ambient light. Hmm. Okay, that, that'll be my, like, top request at this point. Okay, it, it's very sensitive. It's got like 50% of my throttles a dead zone right now. And I'm using the joystick throttle. That'll be good enough. I'll take that for now. Okay, and we still got some fuel in here. 
It's tough to do little burns like that without RCS. Okay, let's just time warp over there. Well, solar panels have a recharge rate. Power usage is only 15 watts, so I've definitely overdone it. Battery is 97%. Okay, so there we go. No mod propellant, but we don't have any RCS anyway. Uh, I think maybe I just undo time. I'm used to when you go down in time warp for it to hit 1x one, one and not go below that, but it seems to do more than that. Now, where is it going? Okay, that should be close enough. 58 kilometers. Sounds safe, but close. Okay, let's take the outside view. Seems like this would be a good spot to land. It's nice and bright and everything. And ambient light is just not working for me right now. Now it shows the outbound orbit. I thought last time it showed the inbound, but not the outbound. But maybe that was because I had a maneuver plotted that was still hanging out or something. Okay, so we're approaching periapsis here. We seem reasonably close to the ground. Oh, I thought we were paused or so. Oh, we are paused. Yeah, we're going to like. There's got to be more movement here. We seem to be pointed correctly, right? To capture. Okay, stage and ignition. Landing gear is not mapped to G. That'll be fine. That'll be fine. Uh, we'll try and land over here somewhere. So, this is a uh, 91 by 45 kilometer orbit, and basically, ahead of 91, we'll retro burn so that uh, we'll pull that 45 in and hit the ground somewhere over here. Okay. We've got 87% of our fuel left, and I need to figure out how to... Well, it says that's the landing leg. And there is no other... Well, there is. We could separate that. So, can we can we activate the landing leg like that? Uh, I'm worried about pressing spacebar and separating off the capsule. Want to take the bets here? Uh, okay, it was the landing legs. That is a tall, tall lander. I've done this thing again where it's gonna, it's gonna topple on me, right? I always make these tall landers that are gonna topple. Okay, right about here ought to do the trick. We're still oriented retrograde. So, retro burn. So uh, the latest we're going to hit the ground is there, but we're probably going to hit the ground before that because I'm going to start retro burning again as we get closer. Mm. Problem is, after I use the joystick, it still takes a long time for it to sell. See, I'm, I'm not touching the joystick right now, and it's wiggling around. See, it takes a long time for it to sell down, and that's part of the problem with using the joystick here. There's going to be pilot-induced oscillations because I see it's not pointing where I want it to point. And I'm not even varying it in the yaw axis, by the way. I'm, I've, I'm only varying pitch, see? I'm, I'm only trying to vary pitch, but then it deviates in yaw, which is interesting. Okay, let's get on with it. Okay, we're basically coming straight down now. Uh, well, we'll land where we land. Uh, okay, well, we've got some residual horizontal that I don't know how to take care of right now. Uh, 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 uh. See, we're hovering. Um, this is a time when RCS would be really handy. We're hovering in this axis. So let me... Yeah. Oh, ah! Uh, 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 no, no! Oh, no, I, of course I'm going to do this. <laughs> I mean, of course, of course it's going to be this way. <laughs> I told you, I told you it'd be sideways. It's inevitable. Okay, can I retract the landing gear? I can explode the landing gear. 
Hmm. This is this is a good time to test how curvily the physics are. Um, it looks like I can't retract the landing gear, but can only explode them. To their credit, they seem pretty darn stable. What well, maybe if I oh if I can I can just uncheck active. Ooh. Okay, well, that having been done, let's sort of get ready to point upward. Yeah, the nozzle's already prepared. And uh, if we could turn that a ways. It's sort of uphill, right? So if we go this ways, we can launch into space, right? That's how that's how things work. I I heard. Oh, yep, yep, yep. See, told you, everything's all right. No worries. When it says kilometers there, I don't know whether it's above ground or... I mean, it's presumably it's above the datum, whatever this altitude is measuring from. You can't say sea level around the moon or Luna, because there's no sea per se, but... You know, whatever they measure, they're they measuring zero from, I have no idea. Okay, that should be a sufficient orbit around Luna. And... Uh, let's, I don't know, can we target our home planet? Not really. My instinct is to have a thing here and go like this. Actually, maybe the gray arrow is right. Let's see. No, no stop, stop, stop. Oh, oh there. Let, let's try this gray arrow. Yeah, that's that's more directly opposite our current orbit. And what we want is something that actually it's not quite. Yeah, I don't know what the oh, I hate when it changes the camera on me when I'm just trying to change what I'm doing. That's better. Okay, uh, see the little impact thing? We don't really want to impact, we want to use the atmosphere to slow down. But I don't know what our periapsis is on the other side, so... We'll just go right short of impact. Right around there, we'll take that. Okay, so... Time warp to that node. All right, ignition. That's it. And we can get rid of that. And well, right now we're impacting on our home planet, but let's get out of Luna's sphere of influence and then see what's going on. Ah. So, 22.2 kilometers. Fine. That should do the trick. Okay. Unfortunately, coming back on the nighttime side, so we're not going to be able to see anything. And I'm not ditching this stage until it blows up. I'll just let it ablate if necessary. Um... We want to be retrograde, though.
letting it ablate like this means that just in case I turn out to be not low enough for the atmosphere to slow me down, I can use the engine. I do want to come down, so. And I don't have much experience going back through this atmosphere. We're not really, okay, now we're slowing down. Ooh, whiteness. Very eerie. I look like a ghost. That's probably not a good sign. Yeah, we should be. Oh, no, it wants to go pointy in first. Interesting. I guess the pixie engine is not that, that uh, heavy. We don't, I don't know if we have any sort of center of lift center or mass indicator in the building screen. If we could change our staging so that I could pop the parachute without separating off the previous stage, there'd be a chance for us to just lower the landing legs and, uh, and land the whole thing. But I don't see that happening right now. Okay, well, I think it's time to separate. And we're below normal velocities, so parachute. I guess I'll try and orient it so it looks proper. 26 meters per second still. I sure hope the parachute can do better than that. Okay, we're below one kilometer. Uh, surface velocity is still 19 meters per second. It doesn't look like this parachute is going to slow us down much more, but we've definitely seen that these capsules can take quite an impact. And, oh, well, ambient light seems to work on the ground. That's nice. And it just goes plop and the parachute does, does what the parachute does. All right, so, a successful lunar landing mission and return on the power of 108 pixies. Well, I mean, it's it's as successful as it needed to be. And it's successful. Don't don't deny it. Okay, so we we did have some interesting flaws in the whole plan, but uh, we can work with this. We can work with this. So I'll gradually pop back into Simple Rockets 2 to do other shenanigans. But for now, I am once again satisfied with my exploits, and I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.